Good morning, everyone. We are well on our way into our day. I started at home and I brought an empty trailer down to Thief River Falls, Minnesota. And now we're on our way back. We're still in Minnesota on Highway 59. I'm gonna cross through from Pembina, North Dakota into Emerson, Manitoba. Just a quick little loop. It's about two hours down and about two and a half hours back home because I gotta go through a different crossing to go back home because I'll be loaded. About a five hour round trip plus about a half hour to tie down and another half hour to uh, drop this trailer in the yard and get my straps off of it. Uh, six hour round trip. So it'll be about a 12 hour day for me today because I'm doing two. We'll be driving into the night, well, into the darkness, which doesn't take much nowadays. The sun's already looking like it's wanting to get out of here. It doesn't like us very much. Our friends and brothers and sisters in Australia are hogging the sunlight again. You guys have your fun, but we want our sun back soon, all right? And New Zealand, I haven't forgot about you. Uh, everyone always forgets about New Zealand, right? It's always Australia this and Australia that. I can identify with that. I can relate. Up in this hemisphere, it's always America this and America that, and everyone forgets about Canada. Hey, we're part of America too, you know? Just not that America. Very similar though, just like New Zealand, Australia, very similar. We're all brothers from the same mother. If you got a delivery going to the far south of the US, yeah, you'd want to leave Friday so that you can get down there for Sunday night and deliver Monday morning, right? And all this traffic coming north on a Friday, these are all guys probably trying to get home to their families for the weekend. The majority of cross-border traffic, commercial traffic, from my own experience, like I don't know the official numbers or anything, but the overwhelming majority of trucks are Canadian trucks that cross the border back and forth, back and forth. Very rarely do you see an American truck, like with an American license plate. And I cross here all the time, almost every day in this region here, going across back and forth. And when you see an American plate crossing into Canada, you're like, whoa, look at that. Huh. I guess there's enough freight to keep them busy south of the border. In Canada, we rely heavily on selling goods and buying goods with the United States. Karen, Karen, it's rude, she's rude. I was talking. 
we rely heavily, all of Canada, on selling stuff to the U.S. and buying stuff from the U.S. I mean, if we didn't have the United States right next door to trade with, I mean, I'm sure we would find other countries around the world to buy our stuff and to make stuff for us. But man, that would make it so much harder, more expensive. Trade routes would take so much longer to get stuff to Canada. Yeah, we do most of our... Again, I don't know all the numbers. I'm not an economist or anything. Isn't it something like 80% of Canadian trade is with the U.S.? And it's mostly by truck, like this. I mean, there's a lot by train, too, but that's, that's my job. That's what I do. I bring stuff... People in the States buy something from Canada. I bring it down to them. And then someone in Canada buys something from the U.S. I pick it up and I bring it back home to them. That's all I do. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We are almost to the front now. <clears throat> Two trucks in front of me. So I'll talk to you guys when we get to the other side. I gotta get all my paperwork in order and talk to the good people at the window. The scale is closed on the Manitoba side. That is a proper welcome home. Thank you. I appreciate that. Ain't got no time for that. And look at this. We have like no snow on the ground. Which is great. I hope it stays like this until the week before Christmas. We have to have a white Christmas, so if it... After that, it can all melt and go away, I don't care. As long as we got lots of... a good... a good amount of snow. Not just a little dusting, I want a good amount of snow. what happens so here we got all the signs coming into Manitoba speed limits are in kilometers an hour these signs say radar detectors are illegal in Manitoba funny thing is they're not illegal to sell in Manitoba but they are illegal to use in Manitoba there you got to clean drain dry your watercraft these signs here on the right says 511 that's traveler info if you want to know what road conditions and stuff are like call 511 Make sure you don't dial 9 instead. You'll get a whole different response. Compulsory, you must wear your seatbelt in Manitoba. I think that's pretty much everywhere. Here's the number for truck permits if you need permits. Which is funny that they put it here because if you're already here, you're already on the road and in violation if you need a permit. So, I guess you can call them and let them know you're in violation that you need a permit. And then these signs are some newer ones that says you must slow down to 60 kilometers an hour when passing emergency vehicles and tow trucks on the side of the highway. That is a law in Manitoba. If you don't, you'll be in trouble. What can I say? What can I say? Oh yeah, and then you get these blue ones coming up here. Explore Manitoba attractions. Every sign you'll notice has an English sign first here, like the blue one here. And then another blue one, exact same thing, but in French. Manitoba has a pretty big French population in the, especially in the southeast, in our in our side. We're surrounded by French municipalities in Steinbeck. You've got La Brokerie to our east. You've got Saint Anne to our north. You've got Taché, Richot. And uh, De Salaberry, all around us. So it's all French municipalities, and the municipality of Steinbach is Hanover. So I made it back, dropped the other trailer, grabbed another step from the lineup of empties, and someone was so kind to leave the riser on the trailer for me to put on the riser pile for them. That was very nice. Very nice of them. The funny thing is, chances are they might be watching this video. This is trailer 105 DB. Who did that? Was it you? Don't worry. I'm in a hurry, but I've got the time. I'll take it off the trailer and I'll bring it all the way over there to the pile there for you. <laughs> Who did this? Who did this? It is a delay in my day, but that's okay.
We're not salty about it at all. It's okay. This is just an opportunity to show off my muscle. Where you belong. I'm just playing around. I don't really care. I never couple minutes out of my day. I just like to bug the guys here because a lot of them do watch my videos. The one who did, they might be watching right now and they're probably chuckling and laughing away. So you got me. Next time, it's my turn. I'll just leave my trailer as is in the light. <laughs> you can clean it up. Look how nice that looks though on the pile. Huh, looks like it's supposed to be there. Just looks so nice right there. So now, empty trailer. We're gonna bring this down to Thief River Falls. We're gonna leave it there. We're gonna switch it out for another loaded one and we're gonna get back pretty late. The goal is to get back before midnight, but uh, I might be getting home after midnight tonight. We'll see. Let's see. I also have to get my trailer ready for Monday because today's a Friday when I'm filming this. So I need a step deck for Monday. I need it first thing. So I wanna get it ready today yet so that I don't have to worry about that Monday morning. I can sleep just a little bit longer. It's getting really late. I just hooked onto my next load and tied it down. It took 20 minutes. Now I'm turning around and let's rip back. It looks like I'm only gonna get back to our yard at midnight or after midnight. And then I gotta take those straps off and then go home yet. Put the truck in the shop. Man, I'm not gonna get home. I'm not gonna get home till after one, one o'clock, maybe two in the morning. Well, we're not getting any closer sitting here. Let's get going. I'll talk to you uh, a little down the road. It's kind of dark. I can't show you much, but we're back at Thief River Falls, Minnesota. I'm going to go back up to Grand Point, Manitoba, drop this trailer off, and then go back home. See you there. Not much to tell you. We're just sailing along. Sailing down the road. This is Halma, Minnesota. Way up in the northwest corner of the state. Way up here. You guys even know this place existed? Probably not. Probably like 50 people that live here. I go through here all the time. I am, uh, they're probably about 12, 15 minutes from the Canadian border. We're gonna hop over the Red River, which is just over to my left over there. And then we'll be in the state of North Dakota, where they ask you to be legendary. That is their state slogan, be legendary. That's one of the uh, that's one of the few states that actually have demands of you when you come to visit them. I've spoken of this before. Uh, when you visit North Dakota, you are asked, you are told, I should say, you're, you're told, be legendary. And it is a good state. It is a legendary state. I mean, the, the east side is kind of boring and flat, just like Manitoba. Southern Manitoba, because we're neighbors, right? North Dakota, Manitoba, we're, we're same region, same neighbors. But you go to Western North Dakota, oh boy, you get the hills there. There are some real sights to see. So we're gonna hop over in Eastern North Dakota, uh, skip on over to the I-29 North and take that right up into Canada. And I gotta rush home, get this trailer unloaded. Oh, not unloaded, I'm just gonna drop it. I think it unloaded on Monday or tomorrow, whatever, I don't care. I don't care. I'm dropping it in our yard. It's like a locked up, secured, gated yard, right? So that's where I'm supposed to bring it. I'm bringing it there, they can worry about it uh, whenever they have time to unload it. I don't know what's going on to it. Maybe another driver's hooking onto it. Uh, I don't know. Once I drop it, it's not my problem. Not my problem. So we'll drop it. We'll take my straps off because those are mine. I paid for those. And we'll rush home. I'm gonna tuck away, I'm gonna tuck Old Blue away into the shop, but I'm not gonna take all of my stuff home. I'm just gonna tuck it in the shop and just run home from there. It's already gonna be like two in the morning. So we'll do a more thorough clean out of the truck, either on the weekend or next following weekend. I like to do it every weekend, but you know. <laughs> 2 a.m., man. What? I'm going home. This is gas tracks or gas track truck stop right at the border 
uh, with Canada. We're in Pembina, North Dakota. I'm gonna fuel up here. Fuel price for me here is three ninety nine nine a gallon U.S. Which, with all conversions, everything said and done, I'll be paying about a dollar forty. I think it was about a dollar forty per liter Canadian. Uh, so that's good. Just above uh, up the road in Canada, my price there is a dollar fifty five a liter. So fifteen cents a liter more. We're probably going to buy about five hundred liters now. We'll see. We'll fuel this up and we'll be all ready to go next week because Monday, first thing, I've got to be way up in Arburg. Well, not way up, but I'll be up in Arburg, north of Winnipeg, Monday morning to get loaded. And that's taking me into Ontario. And then we're going down to Minnesota. So we got big plans for next week. I don't want to have to worry about getting fuel. Let's get fuel now. I don't have to worry about it then. But let's hurry. It's already, I'm already going to be getting home late. I think I've told you this already. Let's hurry. So the way it works here is I, uh, I have to take my fuel card inside to the fuel desk, give them my fuel card, tell them what pump I'm on, they'll activate the fuel The fuel here. I fuel up my truck, when I'm done, I go inside, get my fuel card, pay for the fuel. That way, I guess they've had problems with guys running off without paying. Ugh. There's always some people that ruin it for everyone, right? But big deal, I'll go in there, give them my fuel card, and then uh, they'll activate the pump. So let's get her done, let's get some juice. It's not the cheapest juice, but it's, it's cheaper than down the road in Canada. All right, so fuel report, about 130 gallons, which equals 400, let me get my paper out here, 492 liters, so it's pretty close. I thought we'd buy about 500 liters, it's very close. I know my truck, $3.99.9 per gallon equaled 519.87 USD, or all conversions and everything included. $1.42.7 per liter Canadian equals $605.20 Canadian. So, the price just up the road was $1.55.4, I believe. So we subtract $1.42.7 from that, save myself 12.7 cents per liter, bought 492.104 liters, save myself $62. Canadian by fueling here as opposed to Petro Canada or Petro Pass in Morris. The Flying J was even more expensive in St. Agaf. There you go. $62 stays in my bank account. Let's be honest. $62 goes to the grocery store. Let's get out of here. Thanks America for the cheaper juice. Well, I have an empty step deck behind me. It's the step deck I'm gonna be using next week. So I'm just getting it all ready now, getting it all prepped so that it'll be set to go Monday morning. And it's too late to go home. I called home and I said, hey, I'll be home between like two and 2.30. Like, should I just stay in the truck and come home first thing in the morning? And we both agreed it's probably best because when I go home, the dogs get all pumped and excited and start tippy tapping all over the place. And we don't want to wake Theo up in the middle of the night. And she'll be sleeping. I mean, she'll be woken up and then her sleep will be broken. Theo's sleep will be broken. The dogs will be going crazy. All just so that what? I can go to bed and be in bed by 3 a.m. and then back up at 7.30 a.m. when Theo gets up? Like... Nah, I'll just stay in my truck tonight. Uh, let them get a good sleep at home. I'll get a decent sleep here. First thing, bright and early, I'm gonna wake up and uh, head to the head to my shop then, and uh, park the truck, grab the pickup, get all my stuff out of here, and we'll go home tomorrow morning. That way, we're not. Everybody gets a better sleep that way. And uh, those of you who have kids, I've learned this now. We have one. Uh, sleep is golden. It is paramount. Sleep is, it's amazing. And when you get a chance to sleep, you don't mess with it. You don't mess with it and go home and wake up the whole house in the middle of the night so that everybody's sleep is broken up. That's just a recipe for disaster. That's not a good weekend waiting to happen. So I'll be home tomorrow and the next day for the weekend. I'll just go home in the morning. Everybody's happier that way, right? I'm fine with that. 
that's the plan. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Um, whipped back and forth between Thief River Falls and here at the yard twice. Uh, took it was a 12 hour day of, dr of driving, so about no, about 11 hours of driving because I got to the border, I had about an hour left 10 out 10 hours of driving then right 10 or 11 hours of driving it was a long day let's just say that it was a long day all together i started my day at 9 30 and i finished it now i'm going to bed now it's 1 30. <sighs> excuse me i've been off duty for a little while here already i found a parking spot here and got myself all settled in and got the truck post trip done and then you know, walked around a little bit, got some fresh air, stretched my legs. And I was about to, uh, I'm about to brush my teeth. And I figured I'd say goodnight to you guys. Don't forget to brush your teeth. Since I'm thinking about it, may as well make you think about it too. I'll see you from right here in the morning as we head back home. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to follow my journey. I've been making vlogs here for a very long time. Go onto my channel if you're if you're new. Click my username, go check out all my playlists. You'll see videos way back, like 10, 12 years. Been doing this a while. So join our crew here and follow along and let's see where life takes us. Let's do it together. I'll see you tomorrow. Stay safe out there. Please drive safe. Keep your head up on the road. Keep your eyes on the road. Keep your stick on the ice and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>